forgot it zooms in. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> um, this is my husband Josiah. So we thought we'd put up a video just kind of talking about our journey so far and everything we've done uh, leading up to where we're at now in, in our treatments. I'm here, our dog is trying to play fetch with a piece of a basketball that she chewed off. She owns toys for two seconds. And then they're destroyed. And then there's pieces <laughs> everywhere. Um, so I guess we can start with we got married June 30th, 2012, and we decided that we'd probably wait about a year before we really started trying for kids, which we really had no idea what it was going to entail, and had we known it was going to take this long, we wouldn't have waited that long to yeah, start. Yeah, probably, probably would have started sooner. About a year after we, we decided to try, and we tried on our own um, for about two years and then thought we might need to seek help since nothing's happening. So I went to my doctor, just my primary doctor, and kind of told her what was going on and um, <clears throat> she referred me to an OBGYN and we went and saw her. She was not very good, I don't think. She was weird. Remember she we kind of updated her on everything that we had done, how we've been trying for um, oh, yeah, and two she, years already. And she, she said, try more. Yeah, she told she sent us home and said, try again for six more months. And it was just kind of like, clearly you don't understand what's going on. Um, so we... You treated us like little kids. Yeah, we didn't go back to her. And I had a couple friends at work who had told me about this doctor and their kind of success stories with him and the hospital that they went to. So I called them and got an appointment with him. And the first time that we went in, I already felt way better about it. He was very nice and he was excited and confident in working with us and wanted to get a plan to get us pregnant. So we started seeing him and um, we did a lot of kind of blood work and some tests. Um, I had an HSG test where they check your tubes to make sure that they're open and everything looked good there. And he had his test done and everything was good there. Um, and as far as they could tell, blood work was normal. Um, except after that, they had called me back and told me that looking at my blood work further, it looked like I had a thyroid issue. Um, so in our heads, that was, that was the answer. Um, once I get my thyroid figured out, then maybe it would work. You know, maybe that was the issue of what, why it wasn't happening. Um, the issue that I knew on my own was that I wasn't ovulating. I was taking, um, you know, the ovulation tests at home and I had never seen a positive on my own. So I had mentioned that to them and so they just looked further. And so we decided to get my thyroid checked out. They referred me to an endocrinologist. Um, so I went in and saw him and he's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's really good. <laughs> he's, he's really great. Um, so we've been seeing him for a few years now and we got my thyroid figured out and leveled out and um, I'm taking a medicine every day for that and well first off that was a huge blessing because we didn't even know yeah you had a thyroid problem it was and a that, bad that one can too be dangerous it can be very dangerous if you don't fix es it. especially if you get pregnant yeah definitely that was what started my whole piece with the thing was that was like starting the whole process it started out well with us learning things that we needed to know yeah health wise yeah so, um, we tried for a little bit more and still nothing was happening. So we went back to the doctor and, um, he thought that the next plan of action <laughs> would be to try Clomid. And I had heard about Clomid. I had friends who used it and it worked and they had successful pregnancies with that. So I was very excited to finally have, um, like a definitive plan and this is what we're doing. We're moving forward and, um... I was just excited to see what was in store. 
so we did that um, took it for one month didn't nothing happened took it again nothing happened um, we started it he put us on 50 milligrams and you take it for five days and out of the five days or I'm sorry five months um, out of the five months I took it I only saw one positive ovulation test um, and so basically it didn't work and um, I think we just kind of got discouraged and it was costing us a lot of money because my yeah. insurance wasn't really covering anything um, my insurance isn't that great to begin with and so they don't e they didn't even touch you know fertility stuff at least with the place that we were going to we were just seeing um, he's an OBGYN but he did specialize in fertility at one point um, which is why we decided to go see him but so we decided to take a break from um, you know seeking treatment and going to see doctors and stuff and just kind of focus on us and um, focus our center on God and just kind of pray about things and see how we felt a little bit later um, fast forward <laughs> uh, a year year and a half or so and uh, we had another family member who started going to a fertility clinic um, and I also have a coworker who went to this fertility clinic and she came out of that with four babies at once um, after being you know basically told that she wasn't gonna get pregnant and um, and uh, so we decided why don't we why don't we check it out the only thing that makes it really hard is um, this fertility fertility clinic is just about two hours away um, which makes it hard because I have to take time off of work and um, in order to do that I have to take a whole day instead of just taking a little bit of time out of my day to go there um, but we decided we'd check it out anyway it was a door opening for us so we decided to go through it and we went there and had our first consultation and sat down with the doctor and he asked us a million questions and then asked us the same questions <laughs> over and over again he talked about different options and stuff and uh, believe it or not that day that same day that we went in our very first time going there I got blood work done and an ultrasound done which that was amazing um, yeah to just have things moving that quickly so and the insurance yes and um, we found out that my insurance works with well this clinic works a little bit better with people who don't have insurance or insurance places or insurance plans that don't cover as much so I found out that it covers 100% our diagnostic testing um, and it will cover they'll cover 100% nine cycles of IUI um, which is huge which is very huge and so that made us feel a whole lot better about the whole thing and so we were excited not very excited about the traveling part but um, the ultrasound looked good and the original blood work looked good and then um, we scheduled more appointments. Thank you, my arm was starting to hurt. Um, we scheduled more appointments, and so we've been there, I don't know, four times, five times? Yeah, I had. To, I ended up having to go by myself because um, you had to... Sign for... He had to wait for my meds. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so I've had so many ultrasounds and so much blood work. They took... They had to do all the genetic testing and stuff, so they took... 12 vials um, of my blood one of these visits and um, makes me want to pass out thinking about it <laughs> you he didn't have to get any blood work done but um, this he time did, he did have to do another test just to test his sample again and that came back they said it looked wonderful <laughs> <laughs> wonderful was the word they used didn't feel good though yeah um, so they did all the blood work and everything um, everything came back normal I do have low vitamin D, so they have me taking a vitamin D supplement every day. And my AMH level, which is how they test your ovarian reserve, was very, very high, which in a sense is good because it means I have lots of um, eggs left in there and stuff. However, it can make you not ovulate and or it could make you um, very, very sensitive to fertility meds. And so I think that's probably why I'm not ovulating because there's too much of that hormone in my system. Right. Um, but so because it makes you 
very sensitive to meds and stuff, the doctor said that we will not be doing any injectables other than um, the trigger shot. So after getting all of our testing done and figuring out where our baseline is at, um, he gave us our options of we could try IUI for a few times and then if they don't work then we could do IVF, um, which we didn't want to jump right to IVF because insurance doesn't cover any of that and it's like $7,000 for one round of IVF, which is way out of um, our price range. Well, besides that, if we don't have to jump to that right, right away, why? Why deal right. with it? You know? Um, I mean, he's he's good. I'm good. I just don't really see any <clears throat> eggs. So we decided to do IUI. So we are in the middle of our first um, IUI round, and I got my first ultrasound and blood work done to see, you know, my baseline levels. And... Um, <clears throat> I had to go by myself because he had to stay and wait for my all my meds that came in the mail because um, he had to sign for them. So I got prescribed Letrozole or Femera, 2.5 milligrams, so I have to take that. Actually, I took my last dose of that last night um, for five days. And then I go in on Tuesday for a second ultrasound and run blood work to see how the meds are working. 7 a.m. Yeah, my appointment's at 7 a.m., so <laughs> you, you guys will be up early with me that day um, and then depending on where I'm at how the meds are working and how big or mature my follicles are at or whatever then um, we look at when we would be doing trigger shot and IUI so once they're at the size where they're ready to ovulate or they're big enough and mature enough to ovulate then we do the trigger shot that night and then the next day we go in for the IUI so this is very exciting. Everything moved so quickly after going to this um, fertility yeah. clinic. <clears throat> well, it's what they specialize in, so it makes sense. Yeah. It's just, we did, that hasn't been our experience so far, so. It's been, you know, we're going into our fifth year of, of trying and um, just getting disappointment after disappointment. And luckily, we haven't had to deal with any losses. I know people, a lot of people who have had to deal with miscarriages and... Um, I think from my end, I'd much rather have a hard time conceiving than conceiving and then losing. So, um, but I, I feel for everybody who's had losses. And um, so we are praying that, that this first round will work. And yeah. we'll see in, yeah. a, in a few weeks. You say hi. Thank you. Little girl. <laughs> Is that that? <laughs> Was that it? Anything else? to add I think that was it just kind of covering our, our journey so far and where we're at and um, <laughs> she's like what the heck is that thing <laughs> here's Tommy boy he's our our huge kitty um, Zelda as you can tell the dog likes to torture them <laughs> um, alright go ahead Tommy <laughs> oh, another one yeah, we have a, um, a brother and a sister that we, our friend was fostering them from the shelter and we, she we, was going on vacation so we watched, there was like, I don't know, six of them or something, these little <laughs> tiny kittens and we fell in love with two of them and so all of our pets actually came from the shelter and the cats are two and a half years, no, three and a half years old, they're almost four years old, um, but that's Tommy Boy, let me see if I can find Serenity. Here's Serenity. She's the girl. She's our little princess. She's fat. <laughs> She's lazy. I, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry, <laughs> sweetheart. Okay, go ahead. So that's our little family, and we just wanted to just share our journey so far. And I will update you guys along the way, and I will see you guys on Tuesday when I go in for my first monitoring appointment to see where I'm at. So. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Bye.